We're now going to take a look at smart bones and how we can apply them to vector rigs. And we'll be using three examples for this. The first is to fix the bend of an arm. If we come in here and you can see we have this back arm for Kusi, if we were to click on the manipulate bones tool and move the bottom part of the bone, you can see that we do have some bends occurring. However, there's this part in the vector that's sort of coming to a point and it becomes more apparent the further we raise the forearm up. So what we wanna do is use a smart action, or in this case, create a smart bone. So that way, when the rig bends the arm up, we can tell Moho to make a correction during that action. And we'll be doing something similar for when we create blinks, as well as attempt a head turn. So let's focus on the arm first. What I'm going to do is make sure I'm on frame zero and grab the select bone tool. And you always want to start with the offending bone first. And in this case, we are going to go with the forearm bone. And this is labeled B29. So what I'm going to do is click on new action with my actions panel brought up. And if you don't have that brought up, go to window and actions or control K or command K. And with that brought up, we want to make that new action and make sure that we have the bone selected when we do this. And you wanna make sure that the name of the action is the same as the bone name. So B29, and we can click OK. So now, once you're in B29, we can go through the process of setting up a bend for the arm. And this is going to be a correction, but let's do four seconds of animation, just like we have before in the past. And we're going to grab the transform bone tool we're still on the bone layer. And on frame 96, we want to bring the arm up as high as we think we're going to bring it up when animating. So if you feel that at some point you're going to bring it up to this point, then that's where you're going to want to go. The most extreme pose. So here, we now have an animation looking like this. It's just raising the arm for four seconds going up like so. The goal now is while in this action, to go into the artwork for the arm and make a correction during the bend. So that way, when we're on the main line and we move the arm, this correction will kick in. So we want to locate arm two in this case on our layers panel. And coming in here, you can see we have the points and we can kind of see what's going on here as it continues to raise up. Essentially, this point right here is causing an issue in making the whole thing kind of fall apart near the end here. But that's okay. What we're going to do here is let's go to frame 72 to start. And I'm going to grab the transform points tool, click and drag, and just bring that point up like so. And we can backtrack just to kind of see how this is looking. And perhaps we can bring it down just a little bit, maybe kind of more like that. And now we can kind of see what this is looking like. Maybe just a little bit more. And you can use your discretion with this. And also, you can use the curvature tools. So if you feel that, for whatever reason, you need to adjust the curvature, you can do that as well. But that's looking pretty good. Now let's go up the rest of the way, 96. And we can grab that point once again and just kind of move it over. And if you wanted to, you could also adjust the sleeve to make it look like the sleeve is being affected as well. So it kind of comes up like that if you wanted to do something like that. But we can come in here and just maybe adjust this bend a little bit more like that. Bring the shirt down perhaps like this. So it looks more like that. So now when we go back to the main line and let's just go, I don't know, to frame 12 and go to the bone layer, grab the manipulate bone tool. If we come in now, you can see that we are able to bend the arm nice and easy, and it doesn't create that bunched up look like it was before. And that's because it's activating that smart action to make the correction. So that's one way you can use smart bones to correct actions on a rig, especially with vectors. If you have certain parts where the legs might be bunching up, the arms, perhaps something just isn't looking right in motion, you can target the bone that is causing that motion 
and then create a correction with it. So now let's move on to something a little bit different. And we're going to create a control that controls the blink. So let's just remove all the animation from the timeline and go back to frame zero. And I want to create some bones, or at least one bone to start, for the controls for the character. So with the bone layer selected, I want to grab the Select Bone tool. And in this case, I'm going to select the head. In the event we move the character, the controls will then stick with the character since we'll have it attached to the head. And we want to grab the Add Bone tool. And coming in here, you can choose how you want to set up your blink, how you want the bone to be positioned. In this case, let's just go ahead and draw a bone going straight up, like so. And then coming over here to our Select Bone tool, we can grab the Bone Constraints. And then for Angle Constraints, let's just keep this at negative 70 and 70. That should work for what we need. And we can go ahead and close this. And also, I'll relabel this bone to Blink. And then hit Enter. Now, we want to show label, so that way we can see Blink and it's easier to identify. Now, we want to create an action for this. So with that new bone selected, we'll go to the Actions panel and click on the New Action button, and Blink is the name we want, so we can go ahead and click OK. Now, we'll be creating two actions for this, and the first one we'll do is having the Blink bone go to the left, and then we'll animate the eyes closing. So once again, let's just use four seconds as that's a good default point to create animation. We talked a little bit about how you want to have more animation in your actions than not, just so that way you can cover any animation on the main line that may have longer durations. And on frame 96, we're just going to grab the transform bone tool and move this down like so. Now we're going to go into the head and locate the eyes. On also frame 96, we're just going to come in here and start to manipulate the way this looks. So, and there's a number of ways you could go about this. And I'll probably end up making an effect that is different than the actual rig's original intent. But we're just going to come in here and kind of start to move things around. We want to create that blink. So I'm going to attempt to kind of just bring everything in like this. And then we can use the curvature tools here to kind of help us along. And zoom in. And we're just going to kind of bring everything up like that. Use the curvature. And then we can kind of squish in the eye like so. Now, we could if we wanted to. It just depends on how you want to animate things out. We could bring this eyebrow down a little bit. So you kind of have this animation occurring just like that for the close. And we're going to do the same now for the other eye. So coming in here, make sure we select this point and come down. And we're also on frame 96 for this, just to make sure everything is consistent. Come down like this, go up like that. And then using the curvature tools, we're just going to make some changes like so. There we go. And we can also grab that eyebrow and move it down like that. And if you wanted to control more of this, we could. So if we wanted to go in as an example and maybe move the freckles as the blink is occurring, we could definitely do that. But I'm just going to leave this for right now. So we have just this little animation of the eyes closing. So if we go back here to the main line and we were to play this out just to test it, we can come in here and move the blink down this way. And you can see now that the eyes are being controlled just like that. So now let's go back to frame zero and go to our actions panel. We're going to select the blink bone once again, and we're going to make a new action. And this time it's going to be called blink two. Click OK. Go over here to frame 96. And we're just going to come in and bring this over like so. So that way it's on the opposite end of where it was before. 
come over here to your eyes in the head group. And we're just going to do something really simple here. We'll just grab the eyes, all the points, and using the transform points tool, just click and drag, and we'll just kind of move things up a little bit like that. Again, nothing drastic, but just enough to have something else going on. And then we can go back here to the main line. So now if we were to play with the bone layer here, come in here, you can see we can raise those up a little bit, and then we can kind of bring them down. And again, I could spend more time making that look a little bit better, but I think you get the idea of how we could go in and set up a blink pretty easily here with a smart bone. So finally, let's look at something a little bit more advanced. I'm going to come in here and let's just remove all the animation and we're also going to come over here to the bone layer and I want to make a new bone. And let's place this one on the other side. I'm just going to alt click on the head bone so that way it's attached. Hold and shift, click and drag to move up to create a nice straight bone. I'm going to name this bone head turn. And with the select bones tool, come into bone constraints. For angle constraints, we're going to set this to negative 90 and 90. And then we can go ahead and close it. Now we're going to do a very simple head turn, or at least a start of one. So that way you can get an idea of how this could be applied as well. So with that bone selected, go over here to your actions panel, click once on new action, we have head turn, go ahead and click OK. We're going to go to frame 96. And we'll start by moving the bone to the left. So click and drag and move it all the way to the left with your transform bone tool. And we're going to go in to the head options here and start playing with the head. So on frame one, we have the default position where we're at now. And on 96, we want her head to be moved over to the left a little bit as if it were turning. So let's come in here and I'm going to start with the eyes. And we're going to do something just really simple here to kind of create a head turn. I'm going to just grab the end here of all these points and click and drag and just kind of move it over like this a little bit. The nose can also come in and go like this. And then we have the head itself, all the head assets. So let's come in here. I'm going to grab that mouth and we can move it over a little bit and maybe we shrink it up just a little bit since it's going a little bit further away from us. So like that. So you can kind of see we have this going on so far. Then we could continue along here, maybe grab some of the ears, start to rotate those in. We can take this ear here and perhaps move it back a little bit. And then you have your freckles here. We can also move along with the rotation. And those could be a little bit closer to the eye here. So kind of up like this. There we go. And this is a very basic start of a head turn. And you could start to move your hair around. And again, this would require a little bit more planning out as you're going along doing this. But we could spend all day manipulating and tweaking the hair and doing all sorts of things. So right now, we're just going to focus on the head itself. In fact, I'll hide the hair just so that way we can focus on the head. So you have something like going like this. So now, if we go back here to mainline, we're going to go to the bone layer, select the bone, we're on head turn, we're going to create a new action, and this is going to be head turn two. Go ahead and click OK. Let's go to frame 96, and then we're going to grab the bone and rotate it to the right. And just like we did before, we're going to come in here and start trying to manipulate this to make it look more like she is turning her head. So come out like this a little bit. We can go to the nose here and bring that over. Maybe we kind of shrink it in a little bit since it's facing the camera a little bit more. You go here to your head, and then we have the mouth right here. Come in and... We could probably even stretch it out a little bit. Let's just kind of move it over. 
maybe stretch it out just a little bit like that. Then you have your ears, which are also on the head, so we can just come in here. Since she is rotating, we're just going to just bring this out a little bit. And then you have your back ear also coming out a little bit like so. So you kind of have something going like this now. Start of a head turn. Go back here to the main line. And then we're just going to go into the bone layer here and play around with this. And play around with this. You can see we can rotate a little bit. We have the start of something going on here for a head turn. Again, I could go in and manipulate the line work a little bit more. And of course, we would have to go in and adjust the hair to make it all match. But hopefully what I've shown here will give you a good start for that. So that's a little bit about how we can use smart bones with vector layers. It is a powerful feature inside of Moho and really can greatly enhance the way you work. It can speed up processes, fix issues that come up in animation, create bones that are allowing you to control different aspects, and so much more. So be sure to play around with your smart bones as you start to build up your rigs.